Hello, I'm Kay Dupree with the Janesville League of Women Voters, and it's my privilege today to introduce the candidates who are running for Rock County Board of Supervisors in the districts where there is a competition. And the first candidate that we will be meeting with today is Mr. Dave Brown. He is uh, running in District 9. We have three questions that we'll be asking as a way for you to get to know the candidates and to know some of their ideas and uh, interest in, in the county board. So Mr. Brown, let's start with, uh, based on your experience and background, how will the county board benefit from you being a supervisor? Well, I'm offering experience and knowledge and a love of this area. Uh, I was born in Rock, and raised here in Rock County. Um, I had a career in information technology at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and then after that retired to uh, our home in Fulton Township. Uh, my wife and I bought a corner of the family farm, and we've built a disability accessible renewable energy home there. Uh, uh, but since the last 15 years that I've been there, uh, I've devoted a lot of time to public service, and there's various issues that have come up that I've I had an opportunity to get into fairly deeply. Um, starting way back in the 1970s, I was the secretary to an organization called the Rock River Association of Taxpayers. Oh. And it was basically, uh, we called them ourselves the River Rats. <laughs> it was what we were doing was lobbying and um, fighting, in a sense, a very restrictive shoreland zoning ordinance that a new zoning administrator was trying to impose on the county. Um, so we went to the D DNR and got information. We went to public hearings. We lobbied, and we finally uh, were invited by the Corporation Council to help draft a better ordinance, which oh. finally went in. More recently, um, I got involved studying the Rock River Leisure Estates. Now that's a, a place that uh, up near um, on the Rock River, up near um, near Newville, that is. Um, was designed originally for, uh, um, what do you call them, campers, okay. you know, recreational vehicles to come in just for right. occasion during the summer. But as time has gone on, that's evolved, and many people who've lived there and like it there and grown old enough to retire decided to retire there. So there's a number of people who are living there year-round, and that's caused a tension uh, on the um, mm. among the board. So I um, wound up doing some research into the the um, original papers that set that up and uh, even went to another RV park over near Waukesha to get information and um, you know was able to mm -hmm. take, take this to a committee that was formed of our Fulton Town Board and their management mm -hmm. and we, we've got it pretty well an understanding worked out going forward. Another thing I was involved with when I was in the Fulton Town Board was uh, after the flood of 2008, the, down in Applewood, there were a number of homes on the river. The, the septic systems were failing after the mm -hmm. flood. One property owner uh, was trying to get, um, get onto the, get it covered, but we had to, uh, we had to, you know, take all the properties into account. So uh, I wound up studying that very well and um, reporting back to the board. So you've been involved in some of these uh, ways of uh, the county board really hasn't had a direct involvement in, but you've learned the system and how all of that works. Well, those issues uh, are also county issues, okay. and uh, we work very closely with planning and zoning. I've worked with them, know them very well on other issues, so a lot of the issues we were dealing with, I've been dealing with our county issues. Okay, all right. Well, the next question we want to uh, have you uh, respond to is, in, there's been a recent news story here in Janesville about the increased number of families that are living in poverty, and the county is charged as an arm of the state to respond to people in situations in need. They don't always provide the funds to go with that. So I'm wondering what you would see as some of the trade-offs the county might have to make in order to meet these increased demands. Well, there'll probably be serious trade-offs because uh, as the state, as the legislature, uh, Impose, or it's, it's like they're pushing us down. We're, we're um, losing funding and uh, or they're changing our local roads, maintenance aids, we're, um, Medicaid, uh, Badger Care eligibility, 
this foreclosure mitigation is a big issue uh, uh, for family planning services, mm -hmm. and we're going to have to meet that sort of need. And we've got to come up with money that the county doesn't have. Next year is going to be even a worse budget mm -hmm. year than this year. Uh, now, one of the natural things would be to say, well, we'll just raise taxes. But I don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. And because of levy limits, we can't do that fairly easily. So we may have to think very seriously and widely out of the box. And what would be some possible out of the box? Well, uh, think of the field just north of the jail on Highway 14, big, mm -hmm. beautiful farm field. And there's a tremendous amount of aggregate and sand and gravel under that. Uh, it would be very tempting, and maybe we'd be backed into having to do that, to sacrifice that as pr agricultural land and um, uh, sell the, sell the, mine it and sell it. Mm -hmm. But that might raise money. Uh, another thing we may have to do is let the Public Works Highway Division to get out of the snow plowing business mm -hmm. and turn it over to the towns and let them contract with private contractors because um, there's a lot of issues that are just c causing price squeezes that the towns can't afford the county and the county can't afford to maintain things. We might have to get out of that business. So I'd, we can't leave anything off the table and we're going to have to put some very innovative and um, serious solutions out. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. And the third question I'd like to ask is, what strategy would you use to inform the residents in your district uh, about the county issues that you're having to deal with, as well as some of the uh, actions that end up being taken that do impact them? Mm -hmm. well, well, I'll do the natural things, of course, okay. to have my, my phone number and email address on the county directory. But uh, I also know how to do direct mail. Okay. And uh, in fact, next week, I'll have put into the mail a mailing to all the voters in um, voted in District 9 and uh, you know tell them about a what happened here you know how the redistricting worked and how the district itself has moved up to cover areas of Fulton and the fact that since I'm a, a you know I know Fulton very well and I know the area very well uh, I'd be in a good position to represent mm -hmm. them so I'm going to send that out but later on uh, you know I maintain the mailing list after every election I update the mailing lists so later on, if we have other issues that uh, really need that sort of research and depth, uh, I can do another mailing like that. Mm -hmm. Another thing I can do is uh, for the last six years, I've maintained a website. Okay. Now, we called it, I've called it at the time Fulton Citizens Corner, and I'll have to keep that. But it's really a website that um, covers a lot of issues. You know, I've got a good history section on there and other uh, social issues around. Mm. So that website is going to be uh, available and maintained. Mm -hmm. If you want to look at it, you just uh, Google Fulton Citizens, and uh, you can take a look at it, and I'll be maintaining that. So um, those are the main reasons. Okay. Well, that sounds like you've really thought that through. Okay. Well, thank you, and we appreciate your willingness to share your ideas and that you're willing to run for the county board and look forward to how that will all turn out on April 3rd. So thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kay. I appreciate okay. the opportunity. Okay, thank you. Hello, I'm Kay Dupree with the Janesville League of Women Voters, and I'm happy today to be meeting with the candidates for Rock County Board of Supervisors in the districts where there is competition for the seat. I'm happy uh, right now to be talking with David Diesler, who is the incumbent for District 9. And we have three questions that we're planning to ask, and so I will start right out with the first one. Based on your experience and your background, how will the county board benefit from you being a supervisor or continue to benefit? <laughs> Thank you, Kay. Um, this, like Kay said, this is my third term. I started in 2008. Um, I'm kind of give you a background. I'm currently on the highway, parks, and airport departments committees and on the finance committee. Um, and I also work um, as a zoning officer for a couple towns, the town of Harmony and the town of Rock. Mm -hmm. So that gives me a little different flavor also into the government side of it. Um, I've also was a past um, executive director for the American Red Cross, mm -hmm. and I've done that for the last four years. And I recently started a new organization called a nonprofit called SWEPT, which is Southern Wisconsin Emergency Preparedness Team. So it kind of gives you, I have a varied mm -hmm. background. <laughs> and um, I think with my background, um, I can 
look at several different sides. I can see the business side of it, I can see the government side of it, and I can see um, the citizen sides where they might be in need of um, certain um, services mm -hmm. that the counties and maybe some of the businesses can provide. And I think with that background, um, it, it gives me that, you know, that well-rounded um, arena to, to talk to people and stuff. Um, I've dealt with um, you know, executives and companies to um, people sitting on the curb um, on the street watching their mm -hmm. house burn down. So okay. it's pretty <laughs> variety. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think with that background, I can really relate to a lot of different people. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And the next one relates to something you just mentioned. We've had recent news stories of how the, there is such an increase in the number of families in poverty in our community and in our county. And the county is really charged at, to be an arm of the state in responding to a lot of those needs. They may not always provide the money that goes with the charge to take care of it. So as a county board supervisor, what trade-offs would you support so that the county could actually respond to the needs that are out there? Well, like you said, Kay, it, it is a difficult situation because the county is capped on their taxes, um, so we can't tax anymore. Um, there's more people needing services nowadays, especially right. with the economy and GM being gone right. and things like that. So, so what do we give up? I, well, <laughs> I don't know if we have to uh, give up, but I think we have to look at it outside the box a little bit. All right. um, we're used to kind of being in silos. You know, the county does something, the city does something. Uh, businesses might do something else. Nonprofits might do something, you know, in another area. I think we need to work together more. Um, and I have some examples of, of how that could help. Okay. What would um, be one? Well, one is a consortium, I think. A lot of times, and the county has started going to this area, is doing consortiums within other counties also. So from a business standpoint, if you're... Um, you know, have one county and you're running a department, it's just as easy to run 10 departments under that as, as one, and it's more efficient that way. So we'll gain economies of scale by having groups of counties working together on a, on a program. What would be an example that that might work for? Well, human services, um, there's, there's some programs are working on that, um, development disabilities, those type of areas where they, the other thing I was going to lead into okay. is they're developing call centers too, so that the people can call in to get their answers, uh, questions answered, instead of having to um, come to the job center, sit down with a um, agent mm -hmm. and talk to them. It takes time. A lot of times they can't get transportation to get there. Um, it's just much easier this way, much more efficient and for everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's another area that we can go into. Um, another area we, we need to look at is private industry. What can, what can businesses do for us? They might have some other areas that we haven't thought about that we can work with them to help the community. Um, another area would be nonprofits. You know, there are a lot of nonprofits that help the citizens um, in our community, but if we maybe change the funding a little bit for maybe some of the funds could go from the county to them, oh. a lot of times nonprofits are a lot more efficient at running <laughs> <laughs> a business than, than a government agency is, um, although regulation and things like that come into effect, so we'd have to look into see what we gain from that. Um, the other thing, we have a lot of, you know, unemployment's rather high. Why not capture some of those people and use them as volunteers? They could, you know, increase their job skills by coming and working in a department or something like that, working with the citizens. Maybe some of these people can relate to what these citizens are going through, have maybe had these same issues, and can relate better than, you know, what the county can because mm -hmm. they've been there. They've gone through mm -hmm. it. So those are okay. some of the main points good. I'm thinking of. Those so. specifics are helpful. Okay. Okay, good. And the third question I'd like to ask is how will you inform your district in District 9, it's pretty widespread right. out there, um, of what the county issues, the things you're having to make decisions about, and let them know uh, the f or ask for their feedback on some of the actions that the county takes. I, I really, as you sit down with the county and you're going through issues, um, an important thing comes up, the, the fact that what do the citizens really feel about this issue? might be mm -hmm. the casino or whatever it might be, just recent issues that have come up. But we don't really get any answer. I mean, we have our numbers published and everything like email and everything, but we don't really get calls that often. <laughs> so what I, I always wanted to do, and I would like to do this, is set up either a website, maybe a blog, or a Facebook page to at least people can, you can put the question out there, have them, you know, apply, reply, okay. respond to it, and 
get some answers, get some feedback going back mm -hmm. and forth that way. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, does it fit every population? You know, there's there's a certain population <laughs> that is not into websites, <clears throat> blogging, and Facebook, and mm -hmm. everything like that. The younger crowd obviously would be. Um, I'd like to work with the newspapers, the media, and things like that to get to ask those questions, and, mm -hmm. and maybe we could do it even at the county level um, in their website, perhaps, or some other areas where um, we could at least have the question out there and, and mm -hmm. get the community involved, get them, get them excited about issues that are happening in the right, county. Right. Yeah, I've always thought that the county was kind of the hidden level of government. It is. Uh, nobody thinks too much about what the county's doing, <laughs> but they really make decisions that affect people in very personal ways. So. It, they do, and there's some big issues coming up, you know, with road construction, some of that, the cost of roads going up, and, um, you know, just a lot of costs going up, and, mm -hmm. and we need to look at that and find right. ways to do it, to get okay. around it. So. All right. Well, thank you. I've enjoyed talking with David Diesler who's running as a, um, the incumbent for District 9 for the county board. And we appreciate your taking time today to answer some questions. Well, thanks, so Kay. Thank I appreciate you. it. And thanks, the League of Women Voters. I appreciate that, too. All right. Thank you. Thanks.